Right now on 13 Action News Live at 11, a man is thankful to be alive after being caught in an RV fire. Take a look at this dramatic video sent in by a viewer. Witnesses say they were startled when they heard a loud boom outside their homes near Hacienda and Sand Hill. 13 Action News reporter Nina Porshunkula spoke with that man. And Nina, how's he doing now? Tom James Farron suffered second degree burns on his arms, but he is stable. He said he was conscious the entire time, but he's still trying to process what just happened. An RV van fully engulfed in orange flames, thick black smoke billowing into the sky. James Farron survived that inferno. It was hot, yeah, but I was embarreled in the flames. James just got the RV and he had been working on it for two weeks. Today, he went out to try and jumpstart the RV parked near Okaloosa Drive at Adelphi Avenue. I just all of a sudden, boom, it lit. And I had, I had, I was stuck right there. It lit everything so fast, it was unbelievable. He ran away from the scene and went to his parents' house a few blocks away on Rawhide Street. I really didn't, didn't know what was going on. Looking at what's left of that RV, it's hard to believe James only suffered burns to his arms. You can see it's all wet, soaking wet right now. I'm out my fingers. This finger, that finger, that finger. I was happy, happy to death that he wasn't burned any worse than he was. James and his mom staying positive, grateful for a second chance at life. And the fact that he didn't lose his sense of humor. <laughs> didn't lose my hair. <laughs> And now to clarify early reports, Clark County Fire Rescue was originally investigating this as an arson, but now says the fire was accidental. Tom? Nina Porshenko is leading us off tonight. Thank you, Nina. Well, it's starting to feel a lot more like summer outside. In fact, can we say we're expected to get our first triple digit temps of the year pretty soon? For more on that, we're going to go to First Alert meteorologist Dan Bronis. Hey, Dan. Hey, Tom. Yeah, triple digits not far away for Las Vegas. First time this year we're talking about them, and I think they're reality in just a couple of days. Today, not quite. We were seven degrees away officially. McCarran, 93 was that high. 95 downtown, but look at Henderson, only one degree away out in those lower elevations of the valley, away from triple digits. Right now, hey, pleasant. Seven, uh, 81 McCarran, 78 Summerlin, 71 Red Rock, 79 Southern Highlands. So if you're outside this evening, we've got great conditions, some high clouds out there. They're going to be around tomorrow, and that's why we drop the temperature tomorrow away from 100, because the clouds are going to keep us somewhat cooler. When I say cooler, a degree, but triple digits, not far Away. I'm going to break down that forecast, let you know what days triple digits will hit us coming up in your 13 for slur forecast. All right, thanks, Dan. Well, to Hawaii now, where there have been new eruptions from the Kilauea volcano as the earth continues shifting underneath its surface. Hot lava burns through trees and bubbles up from vents in the ground. ABC's Brian Clark reports the toxic gas rising from the earth is making it dangerous to breathe. Residents on the southern part of the Big Island of Hawaii are facing lava, strong earthquakes, and toxic gas from the Kilauea volcano. We're now up to fissure number eight. Uh, the, the, the bottom line is that we've got additional outbreaks of lava. New vents developed and are spurting lava into neighborhoods. 1,800 people forced to evacuate. The police came down our driveway and just said we had to get out. Several homes have already been destroyed. It was pretty much our dream home that we've been looking for all this time. And just knowing that we're not going to have a house, it might, the lava might take it. It's, my wife is still in tears. The lava is not the only danger. We also have elevated levels of volcanic gas here at the summit level. Authorities are warning residents about toxic sulfur dioxide gas still pouring into the air. Officials are so concerned about the dangerous air quality, they've set up roadblocks to prevent people from getting too close. When the environment is safe, we will be able to admit them back into their, their area. The eruptions have been triggered by multiple earthquakes over the last few days, including a 6.9 magnitude quake Friday, the biggest in Hawaii since 1975. This isn't stopping. Come here, son. No one has been seriously injured. Scientists say it's nearly impossible to predict how long an eruption will last, so residents are bracing for possible repeats of these natural disasters. Brian Clark, ABC News, New York. A 19-year-old woman is in custody after police say she stabbed and killed her roommate. It happened last night on Cheyenne near Pecos in North Las Vegas. Authorities say Diamond Ellis and her roommate were arguing before the stabbing. The 25-year-old roommate was taken to the hospital where he later died. Jurors in the David Copperfield trial may visit the MGM Grand to view where a British tourist says he fell and injured himself during an illusion. 
The victim says he suffered a traumatic brain injury four years ago. The Review Journal reports the visit is scheduled for Tuesday night in between two Copperfield performances. The trial is expected to wrap up next week. To Dallas now on the heels of President Trump's rallying cry at the NRA convention, a voice from the other side. At the same time, protesters in favor of more gun control are taking place across the city. ABC's Dave Packer has more on their calls for change. The sound of a gun and a call for action. Before an image of President Trump as Napoleon, loved ones of the Parkland shooting victims making their voices heard near the annual NRA meeting in downtown Dallas. It's not about being mad or being angry, but I am. It's about being effective in finding a solution so no one else needs to go through what we're going here. The time has come for us to act. Among the protesters, actress Alyssa Milano, who's raising awareness through art. I don't think there's anything as uh, thought-provoking or um, a conversation instigator like a piece of art. And if we're going to hack this culture of gun violence, we have to figure out a way to meet in the middle. And usually art is the way to do that. Meanwhile, inside the NRA convention Friday, President Trump wading into the gun control debate, mourning the loss of the 17 victims from the February shooting. But at the same time, repeating his call to armed teachers. They love their students and they're not going to let anybody hurt their students. But bringing more guns into the schools is not the answer, according to many gun control advocates. They continue to push for a ban on automatic weapons or at least raising the age of eligibility to purchase them. The NRA convention runs through Sunday. Dave Packer, ABC News, New York. A Valley Fire Station officially reopening its doors today. Las Vegas Fire Station 103 is back open and running, ready to serve neighbors living near Jones in the 95. Today, the community was invited for an open house filled with music, bounce houses, and face painting. And for us to be able to get back a full service fire station, fully equipped, fully staffed, to an area that it needed it so desperately is a, a, a great thing. I'm very happy. Fire Station 103 was previously known as Fire Station 6, and it's been at that spot since the 1960s. Well, go Knights go. The team takes on the Sharks in Game 6 of the Stanley Cup playoffs on Sunday in San Jose. The puck drops at 4.30, and if you're looking for a place to catch the game right here in the Valley, the official watch party will be held at Toshiba Plaza outside T-Mobile Arena. It's free and begins around 3.30. Well, the Las Vegas Lights were in action Saturday night at Cashman Field with a Cinco de Mayo celebration. And as 13 Action News sports reporter Ross Lippin found out, it's a chance for fans to hang out with family, support their new team, and do it all at an affordable price. Finally, Las Vegas is in the pro sports business. And on Cinco de Mayo, it's in the soccer celebrating business. The best part, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to see the action. Under the lights on a Saturday night. For Vegas' first pro soccer team on Cinco de Mayo, it's a celebration of the fans that have embraced the Las Vegas lights most. And of course, we got to support our first soccer team, so that's why we're all here. The diversity of this city, we think is reflected. We think it's reflected in our fan base. We think it's reflected in our locker room. Um, and we think that's kind of part of our special sauce. At a price families can afford. For one game, it's about, for the tickets that we got, it was like, a hundred bucks for all of us, like like $72 overall just for us four. Very affordable. I think it's fair. Las Vegas Lights owner Brett Lashbrook says this was at the heart of the team's plan to build a fan base. Las Vegas audience is incredibly diverse. The sport of soccer is incredibly diverse. We think we have this unique opportunity with our ticket price, with our sport, being at Cashman Field in the heart of downtown Las Vegas to reach all of Las Vegas. Tickets start as low as $10 as a part of a season ticket package. For individual game tickets, it's 15 bucks. From Cashman Field, Ross Littman, 13 Action News. A warning tonight for parents, the FDA calls out several makers of e-cigarette liquid for how they're marketing their products and possibly putting children at risk. Mission to Mars, NASA has its sights set on the red planet with the launch of a new probe, what the agency hopes to achieve on their trip. And count on Chopper 13 to bring you breaking news fast and first. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The FDA has issued a warning about liquid nicotine, the kind used in e-cigarettes and sold in packages that look like kid-friendly products, from juice boxes to candy to cookies. ABC's Ariel Reshef explains that some people just can't tell the difference. 
Tonight, the government cracking down on e-cigarette products disguised as kid-friendly foods. Take a close look. This isn't a whipped cream can. It's actually liquid nicotine. These boxes nearly identical, one containing vanilla cookies, the other vanilla e-vapor. Doctors warn if kids mistakenly ingest those e-liquids, it could put them in grave danger. Most of those reservoirs carry about two packs of cigarettes. And if it only takes one or two cigarettes to kill a child, you know, you have quite a few that can die from just that little bit of liquid. In just five years, more than 8,000 children under six have been exposed to e-cigarettes and liquid nicotine. If you do use e-cigarettes, please treat it as a drug. Put it away from children, okay? Put it high above any place they could reach. In all, 13 companies receiving warning letters from the FDA and FTC saying their products are misleadingly labeled or advertised. Makers of these two products have already stopped selling them, and this one no longer in production. Some manufacturers writing on their websites they have childproof packaging and strict guidelines to avoid selling to minors. The American Vaping Association says ripping off trademark products is not responsible marketing. That was Ariel Reshef reporting those e-cig companies now have about two weeks to respond to those warnings, and if not, the government says they could face further action. Well, changes could be coming soon, and it's all part of a new movement that could revive some struggling communities. Governor Brian Sandoval has picked 45 opportunity zones across Clark County. These are the areas highlighted in red there on your screen from Nellis all the way down to Henderson. These areas could see some upgrades on their roads, their businesses and housing, and it's all through a new federal tax break program. People are just struggling over here and then you know all the help they can get. But there could be consequences. The Nevada Policy Institute says by picking only certain areas to revitalize, people may have to pay more to live in those areas. Well, looking ahead to next week, it's Teacher Appreciation Week in the Valley. As an incentive, educators will receive some deals during the week, like free admission to Marvel's Avenger Station and complimentary chocolate tastings at Ethel M. Chocolates. Just head on over to our website at ktnv.com for more details. And they're coming to the wire! He's just awesome! Just a boy has won the Kentucky Derby! And there it is, another year, another win for the favorite at the Kentucky Derby. Justify won Saturday's 144th running of the Derby at Churchill Downs. He's the sixth straight favorite to win the first jewel of horse racing's Triple Crown, the longest streak in Derby history. The next Triple Crown race is the Preakness Stakes on May 19th in Maryland. President Trump spent much of Saturday in Ohio to attend a fundraiser for the Republican National Committee. Ohio is one of several states holding primary elections this week. ABC's Stephanie Ramos reports with Republicans facing a tough midterm environment, the president was trying to focus on the economy. President Trump meeting with business owners and touting the GOP tax bill. We're going to call this plan the tax cut plan. <laughs> tax cut, C-U-T, tax cut. We're going to cut taxes. We're not going to reform. We're going to reform, too. The president ignored the ongoing Russia investigation and other controversies swirling around him, and he insisted that despite his less than glowing approval numbers and scandals, Republicans will be fine this fall. I think we're going to do very well in the midterms. The poll numbers are, you know, pretty good. The, the question is whether or not they actually say that I'm popular. Can you believe it? Of course, the fake news doesn't say <laughs> Meanwhile, a New York Times report cites two people familiar with the arrangement who say President Trump knew about his lawyer, Michael Cohen's $130,000 payout to adult film star Stormy Daniels months before he denied knowledge of the arrangement on Air Force One. According to the paper, it's not clear exactly when Trump learned of the payment, but the sources confirm it was before last month's denial. And we're learning more details on the Robert Mueller investigation. Today, the AP reports that Mueller's team interviewed one of the president's closest friends, real estate investor Tom Barrick. At this point, there's no word on the questions the special counsel had for Barrick. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Washington. Four, three, two. Zero. Lift off of the Atlas V. There it goes. You see it there. NASA's InSight. It's now on its way to Mars. It launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California this morning. It's the first time an interplanetary mission launched from the West Coast. The probe will help scientists draw the first detailed maps of the interior of the Red Planet. It'll take about six months for InSight to get there.
And if you're heading to Lake Mead this weekend, there are a few fire restrictions you'll need to know about. Building or using a campfire or a charcoal stove is prohibited, along with any other fireworks or open flame torches. Campfires are allowed in approved fire pits or grills in the recreation area. Now, 13 First Alert Weather. Hello, good evening everyone. I'm 13 First Alert Meteorologist Sam Broadness. We got some heat moving into Las Vegas. First time this year that we have a Good, good chance of hitting 100. I'd say by Tuesday, 95% chance that will happen as temperatures are expected to increase a little bit every day until then because high pressure is in charge and that's just bringing in the dry air, the sunshine, and we're not going to see that change. This is going to be the pattern through the next seven days, it looks like, but there is some, you know, hope maybe by the end of the week we'll break down some of this extreme heat for this time of year. But until then, let's just talk about the heat. Normally we see 100 first day, May 26th. Last year it was May 5th. This year it's looking a little bit after May 5th, maybe May 6th or 7th. Uh, the earliest ever May 1st, so at least we're not going to see the earliest 100 ever this year. Right now, 76 degrees. Henderson, 81 Las Vegas, 77 North Las Vegas. Very nice around Las Vegas right now. Comfortable walking outside, but hey, those are your normal highs this time of year, so you know it was a warm afternoon. Your winds tomorrow are going to pick up a little bit. We're not talking windy weather by any means, but you are going to notice that south southwest flow ah, 10 to 15 miles per hour, maybe up to 20 in some spots, but gust maybe 25. But most of the winds are going to be from noon to about 9 o'clock. We're not talking windy, though, just a nuisance wind here and there. Uh, and that's not really going to stop temperatures from warming up. We are going to see those high clouds we saw pushing today also stick around tomorrow, and that's why we drop the temperature for your Sunday. Allergy forecast, look at this, bunch of eights through the week. Not really going to see this change through the next several days. Now that we are seeing really warm temperatures and dry conditions out there, uh, we're going to start watching allergy counts kind of go down back to about where they should be. Tonight, temperatures warm, 72. That forecast low for Las Vegas, 71. Henderson, 68. Anthem, 73. Laughlin. So we're talking 10 degrees above where we should be. Daytime highs tomorrow, about 15 degrees above where we should be. And we're talking about 5 degrees warmer than today. That forecast high, 99 degrees. Now, we did have 100 out there originally because of the clouds thickened up this afternoon. And it looks like that will be the case tomorrow. That's why we dropped it back. But there are some models keeping temperatures at 97 tomorrow. So, you know, tomorrow could range from 97 to 100 easily. 73 Mount Charleston tomorrow looking pretty nice. And there are a couple hundreds. Overton, Mesquite, Laughlin, probably going to sit at that century mark. Zero days so far this year. But hey, last year, 86 days at 100 degrees, a little bit warm. 70 is where we should be every year. That's the average number of days Las Vegas usually sees 100 or warmer. Look at the most ever, 100 days, the least 44. Sounds nice if we could see that. Well, since we're starting them early this year, I can guarantee you we're going to be above that average. 100 on Monday, that's that forecast high. 101 Tuesday, that probably looks to be the warmest day of the week. The record is 102, so we're going to be awfully close to that. Come Wednesday, the winds pick up once again, very similar to Sunday, just a breeze out there. But we'll tie that record, 100, the forecast high. Look at the lows, mid-70s, it's going to be warm. That AC will be cranking, and then there's slight cool down as of now, but some models want to bring the 80s back in here. I just looked by Friday. We'll have to watch that. That's the first time I've seen that, but for now, we'll call it 97 degrees. Tom. All right, thanks, Dan. Well, the Knights game isn't the only big game this weekend. The Aces play their first preseason game tomorrow at the Mandalay Bay Event Center. They'll be taking on the Chinese national team. This will be fans' first chance to watch number one draft pick Aja Wilson play. The regular season tips off on May 20th. A warning tonight for Facebook users looking for romance. The social network is attracting more than just singles. Scammers are preying on those searching for love. And don't forget to download KTNV Mobile. It's in the App Store and Google Play. It's free and lets you watch 13 Action News video anywhere you have mobile service. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, now to a love trap on Facebook. Hackers are taking images and identities and then scamming people looking for romance. Here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos on what the social media giant is doing to combat the problem. As Facebook's new dating service prepares to go online, tonight, one man's warning, the social network may attract more than just singles. There are lots of victims. I am a victim. Dr. Steve Jones says for the last three years, scammers have used his photos and identity to con women out of money. He says the scammers pretend to be in love with the women, ask for financial help, and once they get the cash, they disappear. This must be going on. People stealing my pictures and using them on Facebook, I'd say up to 10 a day. But he says Facebook shut down his real account because so many women complained that he scammed them. 
but it wasn't him. People all over the world are being ripped off by these same frauds. We've got a really global problem. An estimated one million Americans have fallen for these kinds of scams in just the last three years. As Facebook officially ventures into the dating world, a spokesperson tells ABC News only dating profiles linked to real accounts can be used. Facebook has a dedicated team to detect and block fake accounts, and the social media giant recently removed more than half a million accounts tied to scams. That was Stephanie Ramos reporting, and as for Jones, he still has fake accounts on Facebook. Tonight, several new profiles with his identity popped up. And if you're looking for a job tonight, Nevada Job Connect has a list of employment opportunities around the valley. There's an opening for a community training specialist with at least one year of custodial experience. Pay is $12 an hour. Also, there's an opening for a seafood processor. This is a seasonal job in Alaska. You must be 18 years or older to apply. Pay for that $10 an hour and an opening for service and kitchen team workers. For more information on these jobs and other openings around the valley, just go to ktnv.com slash jobs. Well, a woman thought this day would never come. With the help of a DNA site, she found the one person who was missing from her life. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, now to an amazing surprise for a woman searching for her past. An online DNA site links her to the father she never knew she had and who she thought was dead. Here's ABC's Adrian Banker. What Tracy Melton found after mailing in a DNA test still brings tears to her eyes. I cry almost every morning in the shower just with excitement and joy. She took the test to learn more about her heritage. She matched with 673 relatives. One stood out. It said, Ronaldo Delgado, this is your parent or your child. She thought her birth father had died. He never knew she existed. She said, Hello, I think you're my father. And I said, what? Then a question with a serendipitous answer. I think I did ask her, where do you live? And she said, Spokane. And then for a second, I thought it was a joke. The two found out they now live just 12 miles apart. She did stick her hand out to me. <laughs> and I, I looked at her hand and I started to, and then I said, well, you don't shake hands with your daughter, so we hugged. From these snapshots, an unmistakable family resemblance. We probably pass each other at the mall. We probably pass each other at the grocery store and didn't even know it. Tracy says she and dad won't waste any more time. Adrian Bankert, ABC News, New York. The first two, uh, two photos of the new royal baby have been released. Kensington Palace released two pictures on Twitter showing three-year-old Princess Charlotte cuddling with Prince Louis on her birthday. The other photo was taken just last month, just three days after Duchess Kate gave birth. Louis was born on April 23rd in London. We'll be back with more in a moment. Right now, here's a live look out of the valley. You're watching 13 Action News, where we bring you breaking news fast and first. One man is celebrating a big McMilestone. That's 64-year-old uh, Don Gorski eating his 30,000th Big Mac. He's eaten at least one almost every day since May of 1972. Don has also kept about 6,000 boxes from Big Macs he's eaten over the years, most of them in pristine condition. I have never peeled a game piece off a Big Mac carton. I've got thousands of cartons with game pieces on there, and if I got a car, that's just too bad, you know? Don has a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records, and in case you're wondering, he says his cholesterol and his blood pressure are both normal, and in fact, he weighs five pounds less than he did 5,000 Big Macs ago. I'm sure he's a hit at parties there. <laughs> well, well, that's 13 Action News Live at 11. We're always on at KTNV.com, our mobile app, and our Roku channel. From all of us here at Channel 13, have a good night. Thanks for watching.